Welcome to Ichthyology class. Uh, my name is Dave. I work here at Montana Wild. And we're going to do some short videos for the, uh, the students at Four Georgians Elementary School here in Helena that are doing the Adopt-A-Fish program. So we're going to talk about a couple of the different types of fish when we talk about ichthyology. And ichthyology is nothing more than the fancy word that means the study of fish, like archaeology or paleontology. So for today's ichthyology class, we're going to study uh, what I think is one of the most unique and really the most special fish that we have in Montana, which is the sturgeon. So I've got a sturgeon down here. Try and hold this guy up. This is actually a fiberglass, a plastic version of a sturgeon, a replica, not a real one. And in the entire world, um, there's about maybe 30 different types of sturgeon around the world. In Montana, where we have, we have a total of 91 different types of fish, of every kind of fish, we have three species of sturgeon found here in Montana. So this one is called, the, um, is called a shovel nose sturgeon, and it gets its name because its head and nose is kind of shaped like a shovel, sort of pointed like that. And it is um, one of the fish that's found in eastern Montana, especially in the rivers in the Yellowstone and the Missouri River. And they don't get very large. This is kind of an average size, a foot, two feet, maybe up to three feet long. I think the biggest um, shovel nose sturgeon, sorry, the biggest shovel nose ever in Montana was about 14 pounds and almost three feet long. So they do get pretty good size. This fish right here, this big fish, is called a pallid sturgeon. And just by the size of it, it's kind of special. It's got the same basic shape to the head and everything else that the shovel nose did. The, the kind of sad but unique thing about this, this is one of our endangered fish in Montana. Pallid sturgeon are listed as endangered. And we think probably in the entire state, there's just a few hundred of these adult size pallid sturgeon. And I'll talk a little bit more um, about them later on. But they get to, you know, 50 plus pounds like this one, four or five feet long, uh, really kind of a giant, which you'd almost call is something like a, a river monster. Um, the other sturgeon that I don't have here to show you is called a white sturgeon. And those are found just in a tiny little corner of Montana on the Idaho and border of Canada in the Kootenai River. And in the Kootenai, um, those white sturgeon can grow to almost 100 pounds. But again, it's just a real short few mile stretch of river that has those sturgeon in there. Um, so all three of those, the shovel nose, the pallid, and the white sturgeon are the ones that we're dealing with here in Montana. And I think one of the very coolest things, if you study sturgeon or any kind of fish, one of the neatest thing about these guys is just the simple uh, fact of how long they've existed here on the planet. Um, scientists that study the old fossil records of dinosaurs and sturgeon uh, think that the sturgeon have been here more than 200 million years. 200 million years they've been around. Um, so they were here, you know, these sturgeon were swimming around in Montana when the dinosaurs were roaming around the state. Um, and the dinosaurs are long gone, of course, but the sturgeon are still here. So it's really kind of cool. So if you go out and you catch a sturgeon, and I know lots of people that have caught, especially the smaller, those shovel nose sturgeon, they can say that they've caught or they've held or they've touched um, like a living fossil, a living dinosaur, a thing that's been around as long as the dinosaurs. And actually, if you look, well, just to look at the, the body of the sturgeon, they have this long bony tail and it's different on top than the bottom, which is different for most fish. Most fish have a tail that's kind of symmetrical on top and bottom. Sharks would be a good example. Sturgeon are kind of related. They have a cartilage skeleton. They don't have bones. They're kind of similar to a shark, which are also really old prehistoric fish. And on their sides, they have a really rough skin like a shark with these kind of hard armor plates. So we've got a piece of skin from a shovel nose sturgeon. And if you look at this kind of up close, you can see, you can't feel it, but it's, it's really, really rough just like what a shark skin would be. And it's got these hard bony plates all over the outside, which also have like these sharp edges on them. Um, you grab a sturgeon the wrong way and just the skin can cut you up or, you know, it's kind of cool. But this would almost be, I mean, you could make a case that this is what a dinosaur skin would have looked like or what it would have felt like. So that's kind of how old and ancient and prehistoric they are, these things are. Um, other things on a sturgeon, if you look at their head, and their mouth. We said they have kind of that shovel nose shaped head. Got this big long head with 
a mouth that's kind of tucked up inside of it. And in front of the mouth are these four whiskers, or if you study ichthyology like we are, we call them barbels. And the barbels are sensory organs. They're there to, to uh, help the sturgeon taste and smell and feel its food. So when they're swimming along down on the bottom, their barbels are down there brushing up against everything. And when they taste or smell something or feel something that they think is edible, inside of here they have a big, long, almost a vacuum hose kind of a mouth. And it comes down out of their head and they can, they can suck something up off the bottom almost like with a big straw. So they're down there just swimming around all the time. And if you look at their eyes are really tiny, which is an indication they don't have very good eyesight. In fact, their eyes are really on the top of their head so they can look for predators. Their mouth is on the bottom of their head, so they're down 99% of the time holding tight down near the edge, down near the bottom. Um, and this one, like we talked about, a pallid sturgeon. Pallid means white or pale colored, and they're real light colored. And I mentioned that this is an endangered fish in Montana. It's one of the few fish we have that's listed as endangered. And one of the reasons is the sturgeon need these long stretches of uh, big prairie rivers like the Yellowstone and the Missouri to lay their eggs. So when they go up to spawn and lay their eggs, the adults lay the eggs and the eggs and what we call the larvae, which are even too small almost for us to see with, without a microscope or a magnifying glass, those little sturgeon after they hatch float in the river. They can't swim, they just float and they might float for 100 miles or even more than that. And if they keep floating, they're okay. But if they drift into a reservoir, if there's a dam on the river and the current stops moving and the water just stops, the little sturgeon will sink to the bottom and sink into the mud and they'll die. Which is why we have not found any sturgeon that have been born, any pallid sturgeon anyway, um, that are younger than about 50 years old right now in Montana. All of our pallid sturgeon are these old fish. They live for 50 or 60 years, so they're kind of like ancient old grandparents, and when they're, di when they're gone, if they disappear, there are not many young sturgeon to take their place. So what we've done is we've uh, raised sturgeon in some of the hatcheries, pallid sturgeon, release them, and hopefully we'll figure out a way to get them to survive in their own, on, in the wild on their own, without having to be released from, from hatcheries. Um, fish like the shovel nose sturgeon, that smaller one that I showed you, we've got lots of those. Those eggs and little sturgeon don't need to drift as long, so we've got lots of those. And you can, uh, if you want to take a drive up towards Great Falls, go downstream on the Missouri River, below Great Falls, towards Fort Benton, or up towards Haver, and you can put a worm on a hook and throw it out in the river, and uh, just a little more than an hour away, you can try and catch one of these um, shovel nose, one of the smaller types of sturgeon that are up there. So go up and do that sometime. Pick one of these things up, pick them out of the water, take a quick picture, and hold on to one. And I mean, you can tell yourself, hey, I've just caught a fish that's been on the planet. Or fish like this have been swimming around for 200 million years, kind of like Montana's living fossil, our own living dinosaur. So sturgeon, pretty unique fish, pretty special fish, one that we have here. And uh, if you ever come down to Montana Wild, we've got some both in the aquariums and some of these fiberglass replicas that you can take a look at. So thanks for watching this today. Hope you had a good time learning a little bit about sturgeon.